I want to welcome you to Daily Victory. I'm Pastor Giff, and it's such a privilege to be with you. I want to thank Dr. Gary Whetstone and Pastor Faye Whetstone for the privilege to be with you. It's always a privilege that I get to join with you and just sharing and encouraging you and all the pastoral staff at Victory. What a great blessing. Let's go on prayer today. We're going to have an awesome, I'll go before the Lord in prayer today. We're going to have an awesome time in the Word of God, and I believe it's going to encourage you, strengthen you, but also propel you to be who you are to the body of Christ. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you right now that we being many members are one body. So Lord, today we thank you that there's a grace upon our lives, Father, to do great and mighty works. Lord, that the one that has anointed us is you. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and glory, Lord, as we go, we read through your scripture, Father, that, that this word is branded upon our hearts, Lord. And we're not just hearers of the word, but we are doers of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to go to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, today, the other day, the time I was with you, we did a, a little bit through the book of Romans. But what I love about Philippians chapter 2, it gives us just some guidelines, some, some mindsets, some, um, some principles to operate. And I believe these are, uh, it's, it's the life of Christ where we can operate in the body of Christ and manifest his life to each other. <clears throat> verse, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. You know, <clears throat> I guess it, I kinda, it kind of bothers me when I see there's a church, you know, second, you know, the first church of such and such an ethnic group or whatever like that. And I do understand that sometimes there can be a language issue or something like that and everything. But, you know, we are one body. You know, the Bible talks about in heaven there's going to be every, uh, every tribe, every kindred, every tongue will be a part of the kingdom of God in heaven. And we should still be that way here on earth and everything and just, you know, um, honor people. I know that sometimes there can be a language barrier, but, you know, even when I get around somebody that doesn't exactly, that I, I, I may not understand their, um, their tongue or their dialect or, you know, their, uh, their language or whatever, I, 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 I just have that sense that they're my brother, my sister in Christ, that there's that love, like, we, like we're family, you know what I mean? It's amazing. And so let's have that, you know, uh, for one another. Verse 3, you know, um, <clears throat> before I read verse 3, the Lord has put on, you know, has always put on my heart, like the, the nation of China, you know, the country of China and, you know, different countries, Pakistan, you know, some of the um, countries in the 1040 window. And I pray for them. And, you know, I've, I've never been to China yet. You know, um, I've been to some other nations. I actually had an opportunity to go to England one time. I had, to actually, I had the opportunity to go to Ireland and actually minister in Catholic schools. And I had the um, pr pleasure you know, by God's grace, to lead about 600 kids in Catholic schools all across the nation of, of, of um, Ireland. Of, and this is a number of years back. This is probably in the late 90s, had that opportunity uh, to do that. And so I appreciate that. You know, when, you know we, we love our brothers and sisters of Christ from different nations. You know, um, you know whether it could be Ukraine. I mean, you, you just name a nation and everything. They're our brother. They're our sister in Christ. So I encourage you to allow God to give you a passion to pray for another nation other than America. Yes, we pray for America. You know, we pray for those that, that are kings and those that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. But let's pray for other nations also because our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, there's some nations that our brothers and sisters in Christ can't even worship and freedom and do the things that we do here in the United States of America. Verse 3 in Philippians chapter 2 says, Let nothing... And I want, to, I want to say that let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. You know, one thing that, you know, that I appreciate the pastors, you know, kind of instilling in my life is strife goes or the person goes. You know what I mean? And so if I ever get in strife, I'm going to have to go, you know. But thank God I can loose my life from strife. I, I declare that through the authority of the death of Jesus, I am dead to strife. I am not going to operate in strife. I mean, I'm not going to either be the source of strife or I'm not going to receive a source of strife. You know, either way, somehow we're going to take authority over it. And either the strife goes or the person goes, you know, and that's just happened. There, you, you, the strife is not a, you know, that word strife means to be at odd, odds at, you know, it's kind of like you're buffeting, you know, one another. And I'm not going to do anything. Um, I'm, I'm not going to try to vie for any position or any area of ministry if it's not done in a peaceable way, if it's not done in order, if it's not done under authority. <coughs> I'm not I'm not cooperate with that. I want to do everything decently in order. I want, I want the blessing of God. I want the blessing of my leaders. You know, I want the blessing of the body of Christ, you know, and that's how I want to operate. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not going after something, you know, for vain glory, just so I could be promoted or, you know, I could look good. I'm, I, I don't want anything to do with it. I want, I want Jesus to be glorified. I want people to be touched. I want souls to be touched. I want 
people to be healed, delivered, set free. I want, I want them to experience the things of God in their life. And I, I, that's not going to happen if I operate in, operate in strife. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. You know, don't just be a self-promoter. You know, encourage your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, there's, there's more in the body of Christ than Pastor Gift. There's more in the body of Christ than you. You know, we need to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ. I love this verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, when we, we could talk about the body of Christ, the life of the body of Christ. You know, and I know I'm kind of talking about, you know, church life and all, all those different kind of things, but it could even be in, in, in your neighborhood. You know, I have a, I have a, a next door neighbor. She's elderly. And I haven't been stepping up to the plate as much as I need to. So there's some things that I need to do, you know, um, to encourage her and to bless her. I believe she's in her 90s. She's a blessing. blessing and she's a believer. And I love this. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And you're all going to love this. Let this mind be in you. See, we can have all kinds of mindsets. We can have all kinds of attitudes. We can have all perspectives. But the word of God tells us something very powerful. And I love this. That's why I'm smiling. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So if there's anybody that I want to imitate, if there's anyone, anybody I want to pattern myself after, if there's anyone that I want to mold myself after, if there's anyone that I want to imitate or have as my example is Christ Jesus. Verse 6, I love this. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And this is what, I love this. I, I want you to think about this. I'm, go, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to kind of hover around verse 7 for just a few moments. It says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So now I want you to think about something. So most people want to make something of themselves. You know, even in ministry, most people, they want a name. You know, they might want accolades. They want, uh, might want appreciation. Well, you didn't appreciate what I did, blah, 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 you know, so forth and so on. It says, and I like to say it this way, he intentionally, Jesus intentionally, on purpose, strategically, definitively, you know, without any regard, made himself of no, re he made himself of no re of reputation. I mean, you think about it, he applied himself, he, he, he intentionally operated that way. So, I can sing all these songs, you know, I can sing all these songs about, I want to be more like you. Jesus, I, so if, I'm, if I want to be more like Jesus, then one of the things I can do is, Lord, help me to make of myself of no reputation. Then I'm not looking for reputation. I'm not looking for everybody to fuss over Pastor Give. And, and, the, and the people do around here, I mean, the people spoil me here at the church, you know, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want to be a blessing to them. You know, I want to encourage people. You know, when people, you know, when people uh, leave my presence, I want them, I want them feeling that they sense the presence of the Lord or the word of, or they sense they were encouraged or uplifted. You know, like after you lift, after you watch Daily Victory, I, I pray that you go, you know, uplifted and, and feeling like you can lead 30 or 40 people to the Lord this week, or, you know, you can cast some devils out, or you lay hands on the sick, the sick will, rec the sick will recover. You know, you're recognizing that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you and makes alive again your mortal body. But also, when you lay hands, that power, that same spirit, that same anointing is in your life, not just upon you, but in you. And you can do great and mighty things. That's why we can do the things of God, the works of God, because he is working. He's with us, confirming his word with signs following us. Why? Because the same spirit is dwelling in you and me. I could go down a whole nother rapid trail, a whole nother trail, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay focused right where I'm at. <laughs> but listen to this again. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So, you know, I mean, I've been around in the body of Christ so long. I've got dozens of stories. So we were having, uh, we used to do something called Victory Explosion back in the day. It was a big conference and pastor, you know, his, a lot of his ministry friends would come in and it would be a week of meetings and everything. And so I'm not going to name any names, but there was a particular minister that was kind of um, growing in popularity in, in popularity in this area and everything and stuff. And um, so, and it, I'm a wonderful man of God, you know. And so what happened was he came, he came to the uh, uh, one of the services, and I, I uh, you know, it was it was a a, a nation a national minister that was going to be here. I'm not even going to name the national minister's name and everything. And so he came in, and he had his Bible, and he, you know, he had his, you know, I'm the I'm Reverend so and so walk and everything and stuff. And <coughs> at that time, I was youth pastor, but I was also over the ushers and everything and stuff. And uh, he said, "I'm brother so and so," and I said, "Oh, we're glad to have you here and everything." So what I did was. <coughs> I made the mistake of sitting on the front row. The uh, seat assignments haven't been given out, you know. And so anyhow, 
Pastor Gary, I went back in the office to see if he needed anything and, you know, just to let him know how things were happening in the, um, in the service and, you know, just giving him kind of an update and everything. And so we said, well, make sure the entire front row is, is, uh, is clear that there's no make, put signs, reserve signs on the front row because brother so-and-so is bringing in his, his entire staff and he needs the whole front row clear. And I was like, oh my goodness, right? So now I have the job of going out and telling brother so-and-so that I need to move him to the second row. And I was dreading it, guys. I was dreading it because I knew it was going to happen. So I went over to brother so-and-so. I said, I, I said, I need to ask you for your forgiveness because, you know, um, brother, you know, brother so-and-so, pastor so-and-so that's going to be here tonight, he needs the whole front row. So do you, and the only seats I had left were on the third row. And I mean, I got him in a tizzy. Don't you know who I am? I'm on television. I said, yes, sir. And, I, and I've been so blessed by it. And I, I said, please, you know, forgive me. I tried to be as humble as I can, but he was really upset. You know what I mean? And so, <laughs> woo! So what I learned, right, anytime I, anytime I go to a, uh, a conference or a church, I never go for the front row unless I'm invited. And the scripture, there's a scripture that talks about that. Don't go up to the front row unless you're invited because, invited because you may be asked to move towards the back. And that is, in the, that is in, the, in the word of God. You can Google that. I mean, you can uh, yeah, do a search for yourself and everything. And so this minister, he had a reputation. And so when I came and told him, hey, I need to, you know, he was offended because I didn't. And, I, and it wasn't, and it, it wasn't, you know, any maliciousness in it. I was just doing it because those seats were already pre-saved. I just hadn't gotten a memo on that yet. Verse 7, again, I'm going to start there in Philippians chapter 2. But Jesus made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Listen to this. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. <coughs> Excuse me. Humble yourself. Somebody needs to hear this word today. Humble yourself. Maybe you got overlooked. <coughs> Excuse me for an area of ministry. Or maybe you did something, maybe you sang a song and you didn't feel like the pastor fussed over you enough. Or maybe you did a, a tremendous dance and the angel's, wing, angel's feathers were floating out the ceiling and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the church didn't clap for you long enough or something like that. Get over yourself. The glory is supposed to go to the Lord anyway. The glory is not supposed to go to Gif. The glory is not supposed to go to Paul or Pam or Susan or John. The glory is supposed to go to the Lord anyway. I love this. It says he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now think about it. Just think about it. If your assignment was to die, that was it. That was your whole assignment was just to die. Well, that's what Jesus did. You know, yes, we know he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed. And it says that his, his sweat was as droplets of blood. And he was like, Father, if there's any way that this cup can pass, let it happen. And we know that that's what took place or whatever. But that was his assignment was to die that we might live. And so we get upset if the, you know, if the, if the pastor or, you know, the ministry team asks us to set up tables or, you know, maybe take the trash out or mop the floor up in the bathroom or something like that. Do everything heartily as unto the Lord, not as men pleasers, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive your inheritance. You shall receive a reward. I love that scripture. It says, verse 9, it says, wherefore God, not the church staff, not the pastor, not the bishop, not the deacons. It says, wherefore God, in verse 9, also hath highly exalted him. Let God exalt you. Let God lift you up. Let God honor you. It's a, there, there, there is a, now, let me give you the balance. There is a place the Bible does say give honor to whom honor is due, but it doesn't say seek honor from those who are supposed to honor you either. So there's a balance. You know, so if somebody, you know, don't go around saying, well, I need to be honored. The Bible says honor those to whom honor is due. Okay, we understand that, but, you know, at the same time, let another man praise you. And you'll re you really, you really love it more. You know, if you, if, if you have to kind of prompt someone to honor you or, 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 or people to honor you, whatever like that, it's kind of wah-wah in the end anyway. You know what I mean? Let, let, some, let somebody else give you praise. Let somebody else honor you. But ultimately, we should want God to receive the praise and glory for our lives anyway. It says, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. I still, we still got some time to go a little bit deeper. Verse 12, I love this. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. See, we don't, we don't, we don't just do things when, uh, right when people are around. We don't just do things to get, you know, when there's a, a big crowd, you know, when, uh, you know, or big attendance. One of the things I love about Pastor Gary, you know, we used to do, we did early morning prayer for you. It didn't matter whether there was, just me and him or, 
me and a couple of the other pastoral staff, or me, him, and Lori and Pastor, you know, uh, Pastor Fay and, and Pastor and uh, Pastor Lori when she was in her teen years, or just a few people or whatever. You know, we prayed. We had prayer. It didn't matter how many people were here for a Sunday morning service or uh, Wednesday night service or Sunday night service. You know, he preached. Whether it was whether it was ten people, a hundred people, fifteen people. Or a thousand people, or ten thousand people, or a hundred thousand. I've been in, in with him when there was crusades where there was ten or fifty thousand people. He was always the same, and I learned that. I learned that from him. He was a great example to me, you know, and it's been a blessing. So, but it says, "Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence." Listen to this: Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't be worrying about other people so much. Sometimes we got people in the body of Christ. They think they supposed to, to work out other people's salvation. No. Take care of yourself. This is a word for somebody. Worry about yourself. Let God work on you. You know, um, when it comes to spouses, you know, so I remember, once again, young in the Lord, I would be like, man, I wish Sharon was here to hear this message. This is just for her. No, the message was for me. You know, so leave your spouse alone. You know, the Bible says for it, it is God that works in us both to will and do of his good pleasure. It doesn't say it's the wife that works in her husband. It doesn't say it's the husband that works in the wife. You know, that's God's job. The good work that he's begun in us, that he's going to bring uh, to completion against that day of Jesus Christ. Um, so work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Don't say, for it is my wife or my husband or my teacher or my, or my friends. No, God. Allow God access to work in you. Allow God access to work in the lives of your children. Allow God to work in the lives of your spouse of your relatives, of your, of, your, of your siblings, of your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, Jesus talked about that sometimes, you know, we're looking at a speck in somebody else's eye and we got a beam in our own eye. I did a message of years on that and the whole church was cracking up because I was walking around how a lot of times when you have that beam in your eye, you're walking around and you're just killing people, you know, knocking stuff over and everything. And you're fussing about somebody's little speck. They're hardly causing any uh, issues, any challenges and everything. But you, you, you're judging them and you're walking around like with this big old beam, just knocking stuff, hitting people, bruising people, you know. <clears throat> I love this. Let's go to verse, uh, verse 14. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Don't be a gossiper. Don't be ne negative. Don't always be causing friction. Well, I don't, wanna, I don't know why they got them doing it. Why are they always having him do that? Why are they always having her do that? Why, how come, how come it, why can't it be the, uh, the, the usher's uh, dance ministry? Well, we don't have an usher's dance ministry. I knew I wouldn't offend anybody. Well, you know, why can't, why can't the... Uh, the younger people sing sometimes. Why can't the old heads sing? Why, why, why they got to do these songs with guitars? Why can't we have an organ? I mean, just, wah, 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 wah. We sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown sometimes. Remember the teacher from Charlie Brown? Wah, 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 wah. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Why? Listen to this, verse 15. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. You can't shine as a light when you're complaining and grumbling and complaining and fussing and murmuring and disputing. Why? How come I, I haven't gotten to sing a solo on the worship team in two weeks? Well, you just got to sing one three weeks ago. Some people don't ever get to sing a solo, you know? I'm not thinking of anybody, and I'm just throwing this stuff out there. So, you know, if, if it fits you, just say, God, thank you that you brought that to my attention. I repent, and I'm not going to be a complainer. I'm not going to be a murmurer, and I'm not going to be a disputer. I love this. We want to shine. Verse 16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Listen to this, that I have none, I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Let me drop down, because I'm going to talk about this person real quick. It says in verse 18, for this cause also do you joy and rejoice with me, but I trust in the Lord Jesus short, um, to send Timothy shortly unto you that I also may be of comfort when I know your state. For I have no man likewise like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. Now, What's interesting, Paul knew, and I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Paul knew that when he sent Timothy, he had the right motives. He wasn't trying to get an offering for himself. He wasn't trying to build his own ministry. He knew that when he sent Timothy, that Timothy was going to receive the same quality of ministry as if Paul was there himself. And that's who we need to be in the body of Christ. We don't need to be trying to build up our own ministry. We don't need to be taking advantage of a platform that somebody gives us. We need to be men and women of integrity. So before I go, I'm about to come to a close. I'm going to give you an opportunity to support Daily, uh, uh, daily Victory. You can give by push pay and see the work of God continue to go on. 
And there's a number that's going to come up on the screen where you can kind of continue to kind of maybe go through some of these scriptures and encourage each other. If you need prayer or agreement in prayer, you can dial that number and have a great time with those that will be in that chat room. God bless you and thank you for being with us here at Daily Victory. You are blessed.